blessed morning to all of us and also those who are at home. So good, so good to worship the Lord together. Would you turn to the person next to you and say, so good to see you. So good to worship together. I see families with young children and also the teenagers. I trust you, have enjoyed, you are enjoying your June holidays. You want to bless the children as they start school next week. Amen. All the parents and all the spiritual parents of this house, we bless our children that they will excel, that they also enjoy studies and that they will also grow up in this second half of the year, all right, uh, to become who God wants them to be. Can I hear amen? We want to bless the teachers. You have a calling uh, in the marketplace. And as you prepare your hearts to go, go back to schools, we bless you that God's grace will overflow in all aspects of your life. And all the teachers in the school say, Amen. Okay. Um, next month, we are starting our Faith Kids on site. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., we will begin to see families with their children coming back. And we just look forward uh, to connecting with all of them. During this period, it has been um, not easy. Our commanders uh, do online Faith Kids ministry. And only once a month, they came back. And the last one was yesterday when they came back on site once a month. And so you can uh, imagine uh, as the children come back and to be reminded that this is home for them as well. Amen? That God's house is their home. And uh, we want to be ready to welcome families back. Uh, those that are at home to prepare to come back. There will be adjustments. Uh, the Faith Kids will meet Sunday 11 at ICS Hub A. And if you're not sure where it is, because it might be your first time, Hub 1, yeah, uh, Hub 1, thank you. Uh, if you are not sure where the place is, our commanders will be here at the main church and uh, ushering you and your children uh, to our annex property. Uh, I just want to thank all the commanders and especially... Uh, our Faith Kids Overseer, Amelia. Amelia, you are here in the service. Yeah, I want to give her a hand for her hard work. Uh, you're up there, yes. Uh, even those at home, uh, we just want to thank Amelia and her team. They were rushing out the renovation and they were cleaning and they're trying to get ready. Uh, the home, alright, for our children. And our heart is that our next gen will be worshippers. Amen. And that they will love the house of the Lord. They will love the people of God. And they will also be a testimony at home. I want to thank all the parents. You have been amazing. It hasn't been easy. Uh, but you were uh, with us from the beginning till now. Uh, there were many adjustments to be made. But you gave support and you discipled your children. Uh, in the ways of God and you supported them, you ferried them, you adapted their schedules and all that. And I just salute all parents uh, with young children. And so we welcome you back into the house of the Lord next Sunday. Also at the same time, our ER and ARs will come back on site. This is our Royal Rangers uh, group. Uh, this is the 13 and above years, uh, uh, 13 years old and above, and they'll be meeting at 1.30 every Sunday. So again, to all the ERs, ARs, you have been amazing. It's not easy to meet online and in person. Uh, and also all the commanders, especially their team leader, uh, Sonia, Commander Sonia. So an applause to all these leaders and our rangers. All right, so we welcome them back on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. And we just want to encourage all the parents of the teenagers, uh, continue to cheer them on uh, in their pursuit of God. This morning, we want to get ready for the Word of the Lord. And our theme is on fires of revival. This is part two. Today, I want to talk about how we are the fuel of revival. And one of the things that God wants to do is to pour out His love into our hearts. Revival has got to do with how we love God. How many of you know being loved by God is a tremendous blessing? Can I hear amen? That there's this great and mighty God and He knows us personally. He calls us by name and He invites us into a revelation of who He is and into an experience that brings us into eternity. I mean, just think about it to have God tell us he loves us unconditionally. To have God assures us, I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Don't worry, I will be with you. To have God heal us when we are sick. To have God 
help us when we are in trouble. Uh, to have God help us love our family and people around us. Being loved by God, brothers and sisters and friends, is a tremendous blessing. And many times when we think about it, sometimes during worship, our tears flow. We cannot help but say, God, I love you. Because you love me, I love you. There is a response back to love. So loving Jesus is an incredible experience. Can someone say amen? Maybe you got to know Jesus when you were five years old or maybe 60 years old. But think about that, that time or that day where you encountered Christ personally and your life is no longer the same. And you begin to realize you have an identity. You are a son of God, a daughter of God. And that you belong to God and you can love God. We can't see God. We always say He's somewhere up there. Or we tell our children He's in our hearts and He is. He's up there but He's still in our hearts. So loving God is an incredible experience. But you know sometimes we don't really believe that God loves us. We have doubts. Especially when we go through very difficult times. We will ask, is it true that God loves me? How can I know? So this morning, I want to talk about this very important question. How can I know that God loves me? Sometimes we don't always love God. Our hearts, our, our hearts have directions, you know. It goes all over the place. Have you noticed your heart's got many desires and many um, uh, plans? Uh, the Bible calls our heart the spring of life so our hearts can go many different directions sometimes we are drawn to the world sometimes we are drawn to the sin pleasure sometimes we want to draw close to God wow this heart never pays attention all right never cooperates so this heart doesn't always love God when our hearts don't love God when our hearts are cold or lukewarm what do we do what do we do it's a very real issue Every one of us would have experienced that There are times in our Christian life Where we have no desire Or very little desire to know God And yet, we say we want to know God We are in that kind of yes and no situation I remember two days ago A testimony by one of uh, the leaders That I was serving with at a conference last week And she told me she grew up in church as a young girl, she was very blessed to have a Christian mom. She prays for her daughter, encourages her daughter to read the Bible, all right, and to put God in her life. I mean, this mom is really, you know, uh, uh, very committed to help her child uh, grow up in the ways of God. But after she went to secondary school, her heart changed. She began to dislike church. She wanted to run away from God and she struggled because all her life she has been raised up in church and now she has this, this rebellious attitude. She said, I struggled so much. Of course, as a good girl, you no, know, she listened to her mom, she came to church, but then she was not engaged. One time, the Chinese ministry needed musicians, asked her for help and she you know, very graciously said, okay, I'll, I'll come in to help. God used that to help this girl to stay in the community of faith, to stay in God's love. It might not be the best scenario, but through it, she learned to uh, press in. And she still said, serving God is great, but there's no love. One time, during the prayer altar, she went out. She said, God, touch me. Immediately, the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon her. And for two hours, she was on the ground and God dealt with her heart touched her, radically changed her. When she went back, right, she had a change of heart. And from then on, she decided to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. I met her when I was in the Bible school and I was thinking at that time, this is a young lady and she's ready to serve God full time. I'm like, whoa, that's really impressive. I didn't know behind her calling is such a, a, a powerful encounter with God himself and that's why she said I just want to give my life to Jesus and do whatever he calls me to so this morning when we talk about God's love that's the fuel of revival for person, personally for us we need that because there are times 
we don't want to love God. There are times we find hard to love God. And then there are also times our hearts grow cold. There are people that we care for a lot, that we pray that their hearts will not grow cold or lukewarm. Then there are times in our spiritual life, we want to love Jesus more and more, you understand? Because you catch something about Him and you are just drawn and you just say, I, how, how do you know God more and more? I mean, He's infinite, so there will never come a day where we, are, we say we graduate, right? We'll always be in that journey. So this morning, I want to talk about the love of God that comes into our hearts, that causes us to be zealous, and then it causes us to be able to love others uh, the way that God's love can be uh, manifested. And our uh, theme is the heart perfume. I want to borrow from the outstanding preacher, Charles Spurgeon, uh, just the phrase, our hearts are perfumed by the love of God. Our hearts are not cold. Our hearts are not this detached. Our hearts are are beating with the love of God, the warmth of God, the power of God's love. And this is something that's happening all the time, all the time. So are you ready? Are you ready for the Word of the Lord and also for the Holy Spirit to touch your hearts this morning? Those at home as well. Carol, would you come and join me? And we're going to sing this song together as our prayer before I expound on Romans 5.5. 5. There is a longing deep down in my heart. Let's go. Join me as we sing this prayer. There is a longing deep down in my heart. Arranging tempest. Arranging tempest. Only you can sing. the word of the Lord, Romans 5.5 5 says, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. This is my key verse for today and we are talking about what do you do when you want to love Jesus more? What do you do when our hearts don't want to love Jesus? How can we share the love of God with others being the fuel revival? 
In Romans 5, Paul talks about the tremendous blessings we have when we are in Christ. First of all, he says, if you know Jesus, you are in Christ, He has forgiven you of your sins, you will enjoy peace. Can someone say amen? We have peace. He says, peace with God. You are no more ashamed before, uh, when you stand before God, but you have assurance, you have salvation. Then he says that we also have grace. For anyone who is in Christ, you have grace, God's bank account, all right? God's resources to overcome all kinds of sufferings and uh, trials. He talks about that in Romans 5. And then he says that we also have hope. Christians who know, um, who are in Christ, all right, they have hope. They are not disappointed. Hope in what? In God's promises. And then he wraps up this short section in verse 5 by saying, all these are yours. You can't be sure about them because God loves you. Can I hear amen? God loves you. That's why he freely gives peace in our relationship with God the Father. He gives us hope. He gives us grace. And that's why he says in verse 5, right, God's love has been poured out into our hearts. Today we talk about our heart that is perfumed. I don't know if you wear perfume or not. Right? Perfume can sometimes attract because of the fragrance. Like, hey, there's something special about you. Hey, where did you buy this fragrance? Some people don't like fragrance, right? They are repelled by it. Uh, and they don't like people to wear perfume. Now, don't change your seat right now if you're sitting next to someone whom you're like, hmm, you smell different or weird today, right? So fragrance is something that can attract us. It leaves an impression on us. And sometimes it can uh, mean that we may uh, want to meet this person again or not. We, uh, I used to have a colleague. Wow, he loves to wear perfume, every, a cologne every day. And wherever he goes, we can smell him first. And because he was a PE teacher, I was very impressed. How can PE teachers all right, wear cologne every day? And, you know, PE teachers, they're very hardworking people, right? Different from the rest of the teachers. Uh, they're under the sun for many hours and they smell a certain kind, all right? They're sweat um, and then it's kind of mixed with whatever they are, shampoo they are using or whatever soap. But this man stayed in my impression all this time. The cologne man, I call him. But at the back of my mind is how much did you spend on your cologne, all right? In order to be able to do this. So, fragrance attracts. Right, fragrance leaves an impression and sometimes it can actually um, be able to uh, uh, open up something uh, that cannot happen just because it clears the air, purifies or prepares the place for a certain atmosphere. So it is here when we talk about our heart is perfumed. I'm talking about our heart is perfumed by God's love. That there is a fragrance that comes out of your life. The way you care for people, the way you serve your family, the way you look out for your friends, the way that you, you know, go for a mission trip and be able to express God's love. I mean, there are many, many ways that we express the love of God. The heart perfume is a heart that knows God loves you. No matter what happens, God will never give up on you. Even if you've done things that, you know, upset God, sin against him, God says, I will never give up on you. As far as the east is from the west and these two never meet, your sins will be forgiven. And so there's a heart perfume, there's this uh, love of God that surrounds and that actually fills it. And so the question is, how do we know that God loves us? There are two ways that the fragrance of God comes to us. Two ways the love of God touches us. And both ways are always working together. And that's why when we share God's love with others, we also bring these two fragrance, these two aspects of fragrance with us. All right, there's only one fragrance, the aroma of God's love. But it's expressed in two different ways. The first one is, of course, you know, there's sweet fragrance in the Bible. The Bible, the words in the Bible, the text in the Bible tells us God loves us. Before we experience God's love, or after we experience God's love, we go to the Bible, and the Bible plainly records that there is this amazing God who loves us unconditionally. And the way He loves is many, many, in many, many ways. And so when we read the Bible from page one 
to the last page, we feel God's love. We read about what He does because He loves the people of Israel. We read about what He does uh, when He sends His Son, Jesus Christ. We read about what He will do at the wedding feast uh, in Revelations. When we read the Bible, the Bible is the aroma that comes into our lives. It's like a perfume. And because we spend time with the Word of the Lord, and in prayer, that fragrance begins to rub on you, and you carry that uh, uh, divine fragrance, I call it, right? It says here, Romans 5, 5, God's love has been poured out into our hearts. So, since we are looking at Romans today, I thought I'll give you a couple of examples from Romans itself. If you are doing a quiet time or a Bible study through the book of Romans, all right, and you read verse chapter 5, verse 5, it so plainly says, wow, God's love, He pours it out into our hearts. So here is a verse that tells us very clearly that God's love is for us. I've explained verses 1 to 4, and then how He pours it into our lives. And the word here, pours, has been poured out. It's a very interesting tense. It's kind of expressed in our English version, and it means God, at one point in your life, he encountered you, you encountered Him, and you experienced His love. But after that, it's an ongoing action of Him pouring His love into our lives. So when Paul says, God loves you and God pours His love into your heart, he's saying it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing that sometimes you are aware and sometimes you are not. But God is always pouring His agape love, His love, divine love, into your life. This is amazing. His love never runs dry. I remember one time in Amplify service, uh, the worship leader taught us this new song. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out of me. All right, on and on and on and on it goes. I love this song because you can sing it on and on and on and on. It's talking about the love of God. It remains. Amen. It never fails. And God is always pouring His love into our hearts. And that love has an effect on us. How do we know God loves us? Because the Bible tells us so. And when we experience God's love, the Word confirms it. The experience confirms it. So the love of God is not just in the head. Oh, read the Bible and you'll know God loves you. It is also in the heart where the head knowledge, what we read, what we understand becomes... Uh, begins to move into our hearts and then we begin to experience it in a very personal way. Romans 5, 8, as we read down this chapter, here is another verse that tells us so clearly God loves us. God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So imagine you're reading this verse and you're saying, wow, God's love is demonstrated. In fact, we love to use this verse to share with someone all right, open up the Bible and share with someone who doesn't know God yet that, look, the Bible says we are sinners, but God loves us and Christ died for us. So black and white, we see it is in the Holy Word of the Lord. And therefore, God is speaking about His love into our hearts through the Bible. As we read Romans chapter 8, here is another powerful scripture that when we meditate on it, we begin to uh, convince, we are convinced Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Where in the Bible says God loves us? Romans 8, 35. It goes on, Paul says, In all these things, in all these trials and sufferings, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And I'm convinced, Paul says, Neither death nor life, Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in this creation will able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes we have friends who are really down and they wonder if God loves them and God will help them. By opening up the word of the Lord, the fragrance that comes from verses such as this will begin to bring power into the hearts. It is important that we hear from the Bible, God loves us. And then encourage ourselves and also to 
encourage others, open your hearts to the love of God. This is God's love coming to us. I remember I was 12 years old when I experienced the love of God in a very real way. So I was in a church service. Uh, I was in a church called Eternal Life Baptist Church, which is down the road here, uh, next to opposite the Roti Prata stop, uh, shop. One of my aunties brought me there for a special service. I don't remember what the preacher preached now, but I remember he gave a call and said, someone here, you don't know Jesus yet. Do you want to receive Jesus into your heart? God loves you. And in that experience, all right, I, I thought about it. I've been at Faith Assembly before that since I was nine years old and I've heard about Jesus, but I never really, you know, agree with what the Bible says about God loves me and I want to know Him and I want Him to be my God. And so that morning, I did something uh, courageous. I stood up. I could, feel, I could feel everybody looking at me because I was a newcomer, right? And then I gave my heart to Jesus that day. That morning, I experienced the love of God in my heart. I was 12 years old. I knew it was the love of God. I didn't know how to explain it at that time. But I just felt so secure and so uh, welcomed, all right? And so, such a sense of belonging. And, and that day changed my life. God's love in my life has always been one of the themes uh, that motivates me and that changes me. You know, some people, when they come to God, when they come to know God personally, it might be through a healing. So God healed them of a sickness and they have a revelation. God is a healer. And then they believe in Jesus. Uh, some people, because they are in trouble, they ask God for help and God perform a miracle. All right? And then faith comes into their hearts and they believe in Jesus. But for me, it was encountering God's love. That experience tells me that He's real and that His love can be felt. It is understood as well, but it is also felt and it has power. So when Paul says in Romans 5, 5, God pours his love. Look at the word used, pour out his love. I think that was what I experienced. I didn't know until much later in my life how that experience saved me in my growing up years. I had an absent father uh, emotionally. He was absent and not engaged with the family. We lived together, but then he was not with the family. And you know, sometimes when you have an absent parent, uh, children grow up different. There's a sense of like deficiency, you know, I call it. At that time, I wasn't aware of it. But now, now that when I look back, I realize that because I experienced God's love, Father's love from God the Father, it protected me. It helped me to develop in areas that my earthly father uh, couldn't help me. It helped me to grow in love in this church with the help of my friends and my pastors and my leaders at that time. It, it created an environment where I was able to become uh, the person that God caused me to be. Today, when I pray, and you know when we pray, sometimes we use different terms to address God. You can call Him Almighty God. Or you call Dear Heavenly Father or Jesus, I pray. So when we pray, we use different terms. For, for me, when I pray, Father God, these two words, Father God, always touches my heart. He's my Father and He's my God. How can this be? And every time I use this term to pray, my heart is strangely warmed. It doesn't happen to every one of you, uh, but it's very special to me because it is a revelation of how the love of God is being poured out. And I thank God, according to verse 5 here, it's not a one-time experience. It continually happens. God knows that we need love in our hearts. He knows that when we uh, do not have love, we are um, dry and thirsty on the inside. We can be functional and successful on the outside. But because He made us in His image, He knows that we need love. And when we are not able to come to Him and to receive this fragrance of His love, we turn to other things to satisfy that love. It's a very real thing. We can go into bad relationships. We can go after the things that may addictions. Uh, we can go into destructive, toxic environments uh, because we are all seeking for love. Uh, and this comes out to then uh, affect the relationships that we have. But because of Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God that comes, how do we know God loves us? Because in the Bible, 
in many, many different verses, God expresses that He's a God of love. Amen? And that His love is in you. And that His love flows through you and through the church. Now, this is really, really encouraging because it means that our love for God can increase. Have you ever wondered how you can love Jesus more? So you have uh, become a, a disciple of Christ for some time and you look at others, hey, how come they are so uh, committed? How, how can I love Jesus like this brother so and so? It's possible that we love Jesus more and more. And one of the ways that we love Him more is actually through the Bible. So when we are intentional and we, are, we take time to read the Bible, to study it, to meditate on it, and there are different ways that we can do it individually and as a church. When we look at the Word of the Lord, we are actually taking in the aroma from the Word of the Lord. Amen? If you take away Bible from your life, you take away the Word of the Lord, you take away quiet time, you take away prayer time, you take away solitude time, take this away, and you don't hear God's Word, what happens is your life becomes, begins to have a stench. It's not the aroma of the Word of the Lord anymore because there's no cleansing. There's no filling up or topping up. There's no overflowing. And that's the time where we feel, oh, our spiritual life is very dry. When I hear the sermon, I fall asleep. I'm sure none of you is, okay? Or I'm just not interested in the Word of the Lord. So there are times we have uh, this problem. We struggle with this. But I want to pray that you will not give up, that you continue to find a way to connect with the Word of the Lord because when you hear, when you read, when you study, when you think about it, that's where the love of God through the Bible flows into your life. And this happens even in our family. Maybe there are some situations in our family that are, are stuck, all right? And things are looking bad and you don't know what is the solution. And so... One of the ways I've discovered is to speak the word of the Lord into the situation. The word of the Lord carries, right, the fragrance of God's heart, purpose, power. And when we speak God's word, then we are releasing like the perfume. At first I thought maybe I would break a bottle of perfume in this hall, you know, and let you experience that smell. But then I thought, oh no, the cleaning up will be very, very challenging. We are not sure you want the smell to linger here after that or not. But not so with the love of the Lord, as you know. All right? So here it is where we can love God because we let the word of the Lord speak to us. When we read the Bible, two things happen. One is you read the text, it is a fact. It is like any book, right? A holy book. You read the words, you understand the meaning of the words. It is word, the living word. At the same time, we know the Bible is no ordinary book because right? The breath of God is in the words. And we have preached about that before. So when you read the word or listen or you write it out, something happens in your heart and in your mind and your spirit. And that's why it is important that we, are, we, we learn to um, be in the atmosphere, the perfume or the fragrance that comes from the word of the Lord. For the second half of this year, I want to encourage all of us to put Bible first. I don't know about if you have been reading the Bible, uh, starting with um, certain books, or you have uh, devotional materials to help you. I forgot the name of the devotional material. A Daily Bread, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, my mom uses that in the Chinese version, and uh, she uses that to help her think about the Word of the Lord, to pray. I do Bible books reading myself. I'm currently at 1 Samuel. I'm just, I love reading books uh, and uh, asking God to use those stories or those uh, uh, truth to uh, change my life. So it, 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 it's just different for every one of us, but it is fragrancing my life. And because of that, then I'm able to share the fragrance with others. So the sweet fragrance, perfume others with the fragrance of Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2, chapter 14 and uh, verse ch chapter 2, verses 14 and 16. For through what Christ has done, he has triumphed over us, so that now, wherever we go, he uses us to tell others about the Lord and to spread the gospel like a sweet perfume. As far as God is concerned, there is a sweet, wholesome fragrance in our lives. 
And it is the fragrance of Christ within us and an aroma to both the saved and the unsaved all around us. I love this verse. It tells us plainly that you are God's perfume. And wherever you go, all right? So if you are with Christians, you perfume them. And together, uh, we, have, uh, we build up one another's faith. We encourage, we pray, we support. And then when you are with the non-Christians, the unsaved, uh, Paul here says you are also an aroma. Because through your life, the way you talk, the way you um, behave, they see something different. They see Jesus in you. So Paul says either way, you are a perfume. But let us not be perfumed. That, let us not be a stench of death. Uh, let us not bring a spirit of um, hopelessness. Or let us not bring discouragement, but let us be that voice of hope, that voice of healing, that voice of strength. Can I hear amen? In 2015, we were at a church camp and God gave a prophetic word to this church. And I want to remind you of that. Uh, for some of us, we continually pray that word into the ministries of the church. In 2015, uh, under the ministry of Reverend Steve Williams, he said that God has called this church to be a house of healing. There is a voice that comes from this church. Now, guess who's that voice? You and me. A voice of healing, a voice of encouragement, a voice of uplifting. There will be broken people that will come into our lives, bruised and feeling discouraged, but you are going to lift them up. There's such an anointing that God will give to this church. Anyone who is part of this assembly, even if you are first time here and you are part of this church, you want to worship God with us, this is what God wants to do through this house. Can we hear amen? And he says that this will be magnetic, like what Pastor Isaiah shared this morning, lift it up, lift God up, and he will draw all people unto himself. And there is such an uh, 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 in increase because this church is going to be known for her love, for her care, for her mercy and her compassion. Amen. So this fragrance comes from the word of the Lord. The pulpit ministry, the teaching, the devotional times in your homes, your quiet times, in our care cells, in our faith cases, these are vital. The word of the Lord, once you open it up, wow. Can you imagine how it will perfume all of us? Second, it says here that not only in Romans 5, 5, not only does the fragrance comes from the word of the Lord, it also comes from the spirit. So Paul here writes how we can experience God's love. On the one hand, we have God's word that tells us God loves us unconditionally. On the other hand, we have an experience that is real. And many times, it is defining. Nobody can argue with you about that because you know and you know and you know that's God. And He's talking to you, and His love is healing you, or restoring you, or helping you get on your feet. I mean, the love of God through the Holy Spirit is powerful. That's why when we lack love, and there are times we lack love, when we struggle with hatred or bitterness, we just cannot let go of this issue. It eats into us. When we are unable to overcome the thorns in our hearts, we have to sit down, brothers and sisters. And Romans 5.5 5 says, through the Holy Spirit. God uses through the Spirit of God. And we will pray, Holy Spirit, touch my heart. Right now, I'm feeling really um, a bitter. Uh, right now, my heart is very discouraged. It's broken and it's, I cannot see any way out. Holy Spirit, touch my heart. There are times we pray for others and they're going through very, very difficult times. Their experiences tell them God doesn't love them. But when we, when we talk to them, we know the Bible says God loves us. We know the experience of God is real, but this person cannot feel it, cannot receive it. So do we give up? No. We become the conduit. Say, so God, our Holy Spirit right now, would you just come and touch this person? How? What is tying this person down? Break it. Release it. Bring healing. So we are Asking the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of the people that we can never, never encourage or cut or, or, or touch. I remember one time I was in a prayer meeting with a lady from Brazil. So uh, she's a church leader there. I understand that she's quite a, like a, uh, one of the key leaders in that church. And she shared with me her testimony. 
about the love of God. And she said uh, she was uh, praying, praising God, and suddenly the enemy came and spoke into her ears and said, God is not good. He doesn't love you or your family. Look, your brother is dying right now of AIDS at that time. And there was this battle, intense battle. The situation is your brother is dying. On the other hand, you are here raising your hands and praising God and singing good. Uh, he's good. Uh, this morning, we sang a song that is good, right? About God is good. And sometimes we are like, our, our head is saying, God is not good. I don't feel He's good. But yet, is God good all the time? So that was her experience. And she said, I just shut out the enemy's voice and I continue to praise God and I continue to believe that God is good, that He's going to do something through the situation and so on and so on. She was sharing with me about how to praise God even if we don't feel it, right? And when circumstances are real, so there are people, they go through difficult times, maybe they were abused, maybe they're traumatized, uh, maybe they are broken, uh, when we went for the mission street, we saw uh, people going through different seasons of life as refugees. And we cannot make a big difference. But when we are there, we are the fragrance of Christ. And through us, the love of God begins to touch people. You cannot see it sometimes, but the work is happening. Why? Because the Holy Spirit... Which has been give, who has been given to us, is at work. I love this verse. In verse 5, Romans 5, 5, it says, the Holy Spirit has been given to us. This is the second tense that is used in this verse. It's different from the earlier one that I explained. And this verse means, once and for all, God has given you His Holy Spirit. Amen. You have the Spirit of God. In other words, you have the Spirit of God's love. And therefore, you are able to become the fragrance to others. But there are times we don't feel God's love. That is true. There are times our hearts will grow cold and look warm, and even there are times we want to run away from God and give up on God. Why is that so? And the Bible tells us, 1 John chapter 2, it's because we love the world more than we love God. There is a reason for that. We must go to the root of the reason. Why don't we feel God's love? Why aren't we uh, secure in it? John says in 1 John 2, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father but from the world. Now listen, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So here, John tells us what is the problem when we feel our hearts are growing cold towards God who loves us so much. It tells us why in worship, we cannot step into and engage with God because the love of the world is in us. And, and John describes here is when we run after the pleasures of life, we put them first. We put relationships before our relationship with God. We put our dreams, our ambitions, our possessions before God, when these things become more important to God, that's when our heart becomes cold towards God. It can happen to a teenager, it can happen to a retiree, it can happen to a, uh, uh, any one of us here, all right? And so, we want to bring our heart to God. We ask Holy Spirit, take away the love of the world. Show us the things of this world are passing by. They are temporal, we will not be attached to them. Instead, the love of the Father, loving our Heavenly Father, submitting to Him, asking Him to do what He wants, the love of the Father for the people that He loves, uh, the love of the Father uh, that will come into our hearts so that we are able to feel God's love and grow deeper in love. Another reason, and this is a very critical reason that we have to guard against, the Bible tells us why don't we feel God's love in our hearts? It's because of the increase of wickedness. It's very clear in Matthew 24, Jesus himself said in verses 10 to 13, in the last days, and I remind all of us, we are living in the last days, meaning Jesus is coming back very soon. We are in the last days. What happens when we live in the last days? And Jesus says at that time, Many will turn away from the faith and they will betray and hate each other. In the last days, many false prophets will appear and they will deceive many people. 
And because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When we read these verses, our hearts are convicted, brothers and sisters. In the last days, there will be an increase of wickedness. Wow, we certainly can identify with these words, right? Sometimes when we open up, we read the news, we listen to the news, uh, we can get overwhelmed by what's happening around us. The murders, the lawlessness, the breakdown in orders, be it government or families, or even in the church. In the last days, many people will run around trying to find the right teaching. Many, uh, many people will listen to false prophets. This is a warning that Jesus gives to His disciples, and that includes us, that we are to guard against it. So if we would not be drawn into the wickedness that is around us, all the more we say, God, let your love pour into our hearts, that we love God. And that love is able to withstand wickedness. We don't condone the sin, but we love the sinner. People will make wrong choices and very, very destructive choices, but that doesn't stop God from loving them and that will not stop the church from also ministering to them. Why? Because God says the love of God is able to cover and, and able to draw us. I must close now. So this morning, we cry out for revival because we recognize in our own heart that sometimes our heart doesn't love God. Today, if you are there, today, if this ap applies to you, then as you sing the song, would you just ask God to touch your heart and He is going to pour His love into your heart. That will be an awakening. I've experienced that in many different ways. Sometimes it happens with one prayer. Sometimes it happens when I go for a retreat. Sometimes it, goes when, it happens when I'm having an extended soaking time just because my heart has grown cold and it needs to warm up. It needs to be on fire. And God does it in many different ways. And then some of us, we cry for revival because we want more. Go deeper. We want to go deeper. We cry for revival, brothers and sisters, because unless we receive that, we cannot be a blessing in this city. Next month, it leads us to our national day, uh, uh, 40 days of prayer and fasting. And part of it is crying out that God will save our city, the people living in this city. And say, God, let the church be on fire. Let the love of God be able to not only bless us, but it will flow from us. Let's stand as we sing this song.